What is happening guys and welcome back to Redbeard's Garage. Today we got a Tilson 212 electric start from your boys at Go Power Sports and we're going to be showing you how to hook up a charging system. So this is a voltage regulator that Go Power Sports sells. Everything will be linked in the video description um, and this is going to help us put out maximum charging power from this engine. Now this will be the exact same as a electric start or a non-electric start and a big block. All this is uh, all the same. All the wiring is going to be the same and uh, all the processes is going to be the same. So first thing we need to do, we have two plugs on this. You can see a small and a large. We are going to, I'm going to get rid of this. Uh, you don't have to. You can put a spade connector in there and hook up to that, but I'm not going to. So we slide all this off. This green wire is going to drop out because it was daisy chained from this connector to the other one, which is now, now fall, falling inside my table. Uh, the only wire we're not going to use is this black wire. It is not needed from our testing. So you're going to have four colors. You got a green, red, yellow, and orange. Your yellow and orange is going to be your power from your charging coils. So this engine stock has one charging coil on it that will push out around one and a half amps. So if you add two, you almost have three amps. You're gonna lose a little after it goes through this regulator. So orange and yellow, it's gonna be your input power from the coils. That is an AC signal, and this is gonna convert it to DC. Then you have the red, which is your output. This is just gonna go straight to your battery post, and then your green is gonna be a ground. So we can get these stripped and get them ready to hook up. When you pull an electric start out of the box, you're gonna notice, of course, a key switch box. We don't care about this because I like to use a aftermarket key switch that has an accessory on. We went over what all these wires are on the video up at the top corner of the screen so you can check it out if you don't know what all this is. So we're going to unplug all of these because we don't need them and now we can take off this key switch. Okay, if you notice, you will have this brown wire coming out from behind the flywheel cover, the fan shroud. This is the one output charging wire from the coil. So we're gonna add a second coil behind this flywheel so we get our three amps, because one and a half amps really isn't even enough to replenish your battery from electric start. So we need to pull the four eight mil bolts out of this side cover to pull it off and then we can remove the flywheel. So the next thing we're going to do is remove the ignition coil. It's going to be easier to get the flywheel off with it removed. You have to use an eight socket to pull that off and just set that aside. It just doesn't allow the fly, you know, it can get caught on the flywheel when you're removing it. Now with the charging coil unbolted, we can take out this 13 16 nut right here. This is holding the starter cup on as well as the flywheel fins. Now we can take this nut, thread it on about halfway or so. We can use a pry bar, get up under a strong part of the block and pry up while hitting this with a hammer and that vibration, that shock will let this release from the tapered uh, shaft that's on this crankshaft. I always go right here because this is a stronger part of the block with this cast it on ear. You're just gonna get just under the edge. You don't wanna go too far because this does have a charging coil. You don't wanna grab it. There we go. People will say that is not safe. That's how everybody takes flywheels off. And there we have it. See so our two uh, magnets. That is every time they pass by this wound of, uh, of copper wires, it sends a signal out that brown wire. So we're gonna add a second one right there and they give you the spot to do so. All right, so I had this charging coil laying on the shelf. This is off of uh, another Tillotson electric start that we used a while back and it'll set right it has these little lips that'll sit inside of the block you're going to need a 20 millimeter long bolt that is a six millimeter by one is what the thread pitch and size is you might want to put a little bit of blue loctite on this because if this does ever come loose it's going to hit the back of your flywheel and kill your whole engine also go power sports sells a double coil setup uh, for 35 dollars where you can take this one off and it gives you two that are daisy chained into one plug that you can wire up so that's an option everything will be linked of course in the video description so i'm gonna put a little bit of blue loctite on these and loctite these puppies down 
<laughs> that will do you. Now you're not going to want to leave this wire just willy nilly because it can grab the flywheel. Uh, so what we're going to do is put a really small zip tie around this area, kind of like this side is, to hold this wire right there. And then we can run it through this hole with the other one. And we can also loosen this up and run both of them through there so it's protecting both of them. So we can loosen this little clamp. So we're going to run this wire right around with this coil. And then this hold down will hold both of them from ever hitting the flywheel. So we're going to use a tiny zip tie boy. So we want that head of the zip tie to be down so it won't ever interfere with anything. Now we have both of our charging coils coming out the back of the engine. We can go ahead and install our flywheel back on the, to the crankshaft. As well as our starter cup. Get this nut snug and then torque it down to spec. So to torque our flywheel down to the spec, we're gonna be using an old 30 series CVT uh, drive pulley. We're just using the back. We've drilled some holes. We have some fine thread 5 16 bolts holding this from spinning. And if we go around here, we're going to be torquing this down to 54 foot pounds. Now the way to torque a flywheel nut down is all in one swooping motion. So don't like tighten it some, tighten a little bit more. It's better to just just get it where she's about snug. And I had the, the engine bolted down to this Sigmund weld table from Quantum Machinery Group, super handy. So we're gonna go all in one swooping motion until it clicks. So there you go, it is torqued. And that's just gonna make sure that that's all seated. So 54 foot, foot pounds, now we can put our charging coil back on. So I'll unbolt the engine and lean it back real quick. Also make sure to undo your torque wrench when done and set it back to zero because you can wear out the springs inside of it and it won't be accurate no more. Good morning now. So now we can put our charging coil back on. We're gonna get the bolts, bolts snug just so we can move the coil back and forth. Now you can take any business card that's about the right thickness and slot it in between the coil. This is the air gap you need to leave. And you need to do this on the magnet. So now we can slide that in. Snug this up a little bit. Make sure this side is good as well. And there is our air gap set. So long as we can fit that business card good and snug in between the magnet and the charging coil, then we are good. Our side cover can go back on. Make sure when you're putting this side cover on with the governor still installed that you don't grab the uh, the springs for the governor. A uh, long time ago, quick side story, Braxton was uh, doing a little modifications to his engine. I think he was painting the side cover and he pulled it off, painted it and put it back on. What he didn't know was a spring back here. Hard to see but he got it pinched in between the side cover. So what that did was held his throttle at full bore. And when he started it back up, it took off and almost hit his mom's car. Would have been hilarious to get on camera. So if we go back to the voltage regulator, like I said, the green is the ground. The red is the output. So this is the power out that's gonna to go to charge your battery or run your headlight, whatever you're doing. And then the yellow and the orange is gonna be the charging coils in. So we're gonna use these bullet style connectors on the yellow and orange, and then we're gonna use some ring terminals on the red and the green. Normally I would solder these, but for the sake of the video, we're just gonna use some crimp connectors. So we can plug the yellow and the orange up to the brown lines going to our charging coils. Now the red wire can go right here on the, the post that you're hot from your battery would go on because this is going to be a constant hot wire 
like an eight gauge or even up to a four gauge, depending on your engine and how far your battery is from your engine, that's gonna be a constant hot to your battery. Cause this is where the power's coming into the starter solenoid and it's relying the starter to have enough power when you turn the switch on to crank it over. So this is gonna charge through that line back to your battery. So the green wire, you can ground in between the flywheel cover with this bolt. So you can take that bolt out and sandwich it in between right there. So that is how you hook up a voltage regulator. And again, what this is gonna do is take the AC current coming from the charging coils and turn it into DC current to charge your batteries. Now this won't stop the pulsing of a headlight. All this is doing is cleaning up the AC current turning into DC current and allowing both coils to work together. Because if you was just to hook those up to a battery together, the electricity could go from one to the other. And this has a diode in between each input so the power coming in cannot go backwards it only goes one way so make sure to check out the links for all these parts in the video description uh, i'll even put a wiring connector kit but these voltage regulators from go power sports will work perfectly fine uh, like i said you're going to get around three amps of output and uh, that's good enough to run a headlight or replenish your battery from electric start so if you want to see more on this series we are installing this engine on a eton rover that we did the reverse gearbox from go power sports as well and on the next episode we're going to be pulling off the governor and showing you how to remove the governor the fastest and most efficient way on these tiltsons or predator so stay tuned thank you guys for watching make sure to check out them links we love you and god bless